authors, Julia Donaldson, Alex Scheffler. I was thinking though, it's a bit strange how all the sticks are moving. <gasps> you know who else loves this book? Mrs. Wilson. Shall I give her a call? Anna, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. I was just reading Stickman and I knew you loved it too, so I thought I'd give you a call. Oh, how funny! I'm literally just playing with my stick insects. Stick insects? What are they? They're insects that look like sticks. They always remind me of Stickman. I love that book. Would you like me to show you them and tell you about them? They're amazing. Yes, please, Mrs. Wilson. I love seeing all of your bugs. Okay, hang on. How funny that I was playing with my stick insects just as Miss Anna was reading Stick Man. Can you see my stick insect? They're amazing, aren't they? Do you know that in the entire animal kingdom, stick insects have the best camouflage. If you look at them, they look like they're dead. And they do that so that predators think that they're just twigs and just sticks, a bit like stick man in the story. But they're not, they're actually very clever. And some can even change color. They can also get quite long. They don't like it too cold. See, they're not going to move for me because they know that I, I could potentially be a predator, but I'm not. They're going to wake up. Come on. You're okay. Can you see its legs coming out? Maybe if I'm really quiet. Can you see it's now all open? Oh, it's walking. Look how long it is. How many legs does it have? Can you see? It has three legs on one side of its stick body and three legs on the other side of its stick body. So how many legs does it have? Should we count together? One, two, three, four, five, six. It has six legs. And then two antennae at the front. They are sensors. So they can sense smell things around them. They're pretty cool, aren't they? They can reach around 22 inches long and there are loads of different types of ones. You can get ones that are leaf stick insects and they are literally, they look just like a leaf. I do like these. They mainly eat shrubs. These particular stick insects really like privet. And I'm quite lucky because where I live, there's a, a bush around the corner and I go and take all the privet off of it. Shh. And they really like that. See, Miss Anna, how cool are they? Oh wow, they are just like Stickman and Lady Love. They are really incredible creatures. And I think they'd fool me. I would think they're sticks. It's a shame it's raining today, otherwise I'd go out in the garden looking for some. Oh, but you do know what does like the rain? Snails. Oh, I know, it is so wet outside, isn't it? I love going snail collecting. Do you ever go and snail search in your garden? I love looking for snails. Miss Anna, I've got not garden snails, but I have really big giant African land snails. Would you like me to show you them? A giant African land snail? Yeah, I would love to see that, Mrs. Wilson. African land snails are by far one of the most best pets. They're most probably one of my favourites that I have. They are incredible. So they come from Africa and they like it to be quite warm and humid. So where they live, I've got them in a lovely big home and it's got lots of soil and I spray it damp so it makes it humid because I keep it nice and warm. And humid's like that sort of hot, sticky heat, wet heat type of thing. And they like that. They love eating anything green. They like carrots, they like um, cabbage leaves, they love cucumber, they like bananas, um, they like pepper, they're really, they're not fussy and they're very healthy. I mean, that's a very good way to eat. Now, 
when we were learning about dinosaurs, we talked about some dinosaurs being carnivores and some dinosaurs being herbivores. So if snails only eat and stick insects, by the way, shrubs or fruits and vegetables, does that make them a carnivore or a herbivore? A herbivore, well done. So I'm gonna show you some of my snails. So, I'm gonna show you a baby one first. She's not that old. And you can see the difference between an African land snail and your garden snail is this shell. It's lovely and pointy. And she's got a gorgeous shell. Look at the lovely colouring on it. It's really lovely. That's one. Now this is what you call the junk snail. Look at that amazing shell. Now, giant African land snails can actually get really, really big. They can get up to seven inches long, okay? And these spirals, they can get between seven and nine. So let's recount how many my snail has. One, two, three, four, five, six. So she's still not fully grown. How incredible. Now these two things at the top, they are the snail's eyes. And hopefully you'll see in a minute, there's two at the bottom as well that are gonna come out. And there it's smell sensors. Can you see it's coming out there? Do you see that one? That's its smell sensor. And this big gooey bit is kind of known as their large muscular foot. It's all muscle. And that's how they move along. And they produce this thing called mucus. So it's like moist to help them move. And they move very, very slowly. How amazing are they? And these are really good because if they see a predator coming, they curl up in their shell. No. Now the next one isn't as big, but it's quite rare, which means you don't see lots of them. This is an albino African snail, which means its muscular foot is white. That's getting all gooey. Hopefully she'll come out and see us. Yay! I love snails. I used to collect them. When I was a child, I used to always have snails. I used to go in my garden and collect them all the time. Now, to keep their shells really healthy, they need something called calcium, which we all need as well to keep our bones really healthy. So to give them calcium, I buy what's called a cuttlebone fish. And it's this big sort of white bone and it's from a fish and they suck on it and it gives them lots of calcium which gives them these gorgeous shells and keeps them really strong. I wonder how many snails you'll be able to find in your garden today. So Miss Anna I hope that has told you all about them. I'm learning so much about all different sorts of bugs this person all because of you. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see what we're going to learn about tomorrow. Bye. Bye. I was thinking, because we have been learning so much about bugs this week, it'd be really good to make a bug habitat. A habitat is somewhere a bug lives or an animal lives. And they can, you can get lots of different habitats. So lots of bugs like long grass and soil. Some bugs live in a habitat that's got lots of water, so maybe a pond. Uh, some animals live in hot habitats, so maybe in the desert. We can make any sort of habitat we like. Maybe you could make one for snails in the nice wet grass. Or if you want to go across the seas, you can make one for a dung beetle in a hot desert. <laughs> I think I might get a shoebox and make it into a new habitat so I might put some sticks in there and some grass and soil and then I might even see if I can find any bugs and see if they want to go in there. I think that would be a great idea. I can't wait to see what you do.